Hi guys, welcome to the Classes Corner, I'm Kat and this week I'm going to be talking about the new episode of the new BBC series Troy Fall of a City. This is episode 3, Siege. So there's three main plot points in this episode that I'm going to be talking about. First off you have uh, Hector and Alexander slash Paris going on a quest or going on a trip to see Andromache, Hector's wife's father, to try and help out Troy, who has been under siege by the Greek forces for a year. So this is a year into the war. Troy is having some problems with food. Um, all of their supplies have been cut off and they're trying to get an underground sort of passage sorted so they can get supplies into the city. And to do this, they need Andromache's father, Etion's help. So they go off to find him and some things happen that I'm going to talk about more in depth. Uh, the second plot point is Andromache, again Hecla's wife, um, wants to fall pregnant, she wants to have a child and her, you know, so her story with that and her relationship with Helen who is trying, um, who Helen is trying to get more in touch with the city. She wants to be more uh, in touch with the common people of Troy and she wants to get a little bit more approval, especially now that lots of people are blaming her for the war and the food shortage. Um, so there's more of that. And basically uh, then you have the Greek side of it and what they're planning. So you know, a couple of things are going on and I'm actually going to use these plot points in this episode to talk about a few ancient Greek concepts which are very important to the war, uh, to the Iliad as a text. Um, and you know, uh, these concepts which I'm going to talk about are also important to classics in general and do feature heavily in the Trojan myth. So first off we have uh, again Hector and Paris going to Etion. Etion is again Andromache's father, he's mentioned in the Iliad a little bit and I'm going to talk more about him when I come to Andromache's section. Um, the big thing with uh, Hector and Alexander's plot point in this episode is something I'm going to talk about which isn't really a criticism of the show um, because lots of classical concepts don't have to be carried over I feel to a modern audience because they don't have the same significance but for a classicist some things do really jump out as sort of like oh okay that's a bit, mm, bit weird um, because when uh, Alexander and Hector when Paris and Hector get to Ession's group they've sort of combined two groups from the Iliad sort of into this one section um, they are greeted by Ession who you know, greets Hector quite warmly, he's a bit warmer with Paris for obvious reasons, but Hector he sees um, the priest of Apollo, Crises. Now uh, in the Iliad, Crises and Etion's group are sort of different groups, so they've sort of combined these two groups together, um, and Crises says um, that he was the one who predicted that Paris would be bad for Troy, uh, while in, uh, in myth I don't think he is. I can't exactly remember the name of that priest or if there is a specific name for a specific priest at that point. Uh, if you know comment down below uh, but Chryses isn't that person and he tells Hector that he, Hector must stop Paris returning to Troy. That you know the gods are angry with Paris that you know, uh, Priam and Hecabe have forced the god, have angered the gods by allowing Paris back into the city, and Hector must stop him. Sort of implying that Hector should kill his brother um, to sort of stop the anger of the gods. And why that is a thing is because there is a concept of in ancient Greek literature and ancient Greek culture called miasma. Um, it's a concept which, like some of the other concepts I'm going to describe in this video, uh, is not easily translated into English. We don't really have the concept in our culture anymore. Uh, the closest thing is maybe like a sin, but even then that's not really a thing. Uh, it's basically a crime against the gods in a way that will get you punished severely. And another word for it that's translate miasma is translated into English is pollution. Because, um, say, imagine a river, and that river is both your personal life as a person, your family life, and your communal life as a city. Uh, so if someone does something that causes miasma, that can pollute that entire river. It will affect your personal life, it can affect your entire family for generations, and it can actually affect your city or your country. The gods can cause problems for you. 
and uh, you can see this in there's lots of ways to cause miasma I will talk about some of them later but one of the ways is killing your blood related family uh, for example in Oedipus Rex he obviously accidentally kills his father and that in turn causes a miasma which caught which uh, the gods send down a plague on the entire city of Thebes and then Oedipus has to be punished um, there are different degrees of this for example if you kill a cousin you can sort of do trials and you know you can purify yourself you know it's less of an issue if you kill your father plague if you kill your mother um as i will describe later there's um there's a sort of issue with that uh you know in the oristia if you kill your mother there's an argument that you according to the first athenian court case of murder which is uh orestes versus the furies um, with Apollo and Athena presiding, uh, that you're not actually biologically related to your mother. It's a bit silly and that's why eventually Orestes, Agamemnon's son, gets away with killing his mother Clytemnestra. Spoilers potentially for other series, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so there's a thing there basically, but killing a family member, a blood related family member, causes pollution. It can cause the gods to really rail against your entire family and your entire city as well as your personal life. So, and there is also a concept in ancient Greek culture that your sibling is the most closely related to you. Uh, for example, in the Seven Against Thebes, when uh, sort of Oedipus's sons kill each other, that is basically an awful, awful thing because they are the most closely related. Fratricide and sororicide is the worst crime you can commit in terms of causing miasma and causing pollution because they are the most closely related to you. So when it comes to Crises as a character, and I'll talk about him because he's actually really important to actually concept of pollution in another way, um, he is featured, Croesus is a character who is featured very prominently in the book one of the Iliad. He is very, he is a priest of Apollo, uh, he comes from a city called Chryseis, uh, and he has a daughter Chryseis, and Chryseis is taken when Chryseis is sacked um, as a slave for Agamemnon. Uh, Chryseis goes to the Greeks, uh, Chryseis goes to the Greeks as a supplicant asking for his daughter back, and then when he is denied, he asks Apollo to send a plague because the Greeks uh, won't give his daughter back and they denied his supplication. And supplication is another thing that I'll get into in a bit. Um, so Chryseis, so Chryseis is, at least in the Iliad, is very close to the gods. He is in good enough standing with Apollo that Apollo will send a plague because Chryseis asked him to. He's very close to that. So a character who is described like that telling Hector or implying to Hector that he should kill his brother is a little bit silly because to me it's a bit of a catch-22 in that case because if it's oh Hector you must kill your brother or the city will fall or the city will come to destruction well if Hector Paris's brother kills Paris that would cause a huge amount of miasma it would cause pollution because that's an awful thing to do you, you sh in in ancient texts you sh don't kill your brother um so that would just as much cause the destruct could cause the destruction of Troy because then the gods could be like oh look he's killed his brother that's awful we'll you know send, send a plague send an earthquake send a thing will the Greeks will let the Greeks sack the city really easily so and the fact that Hector who was portrayed as um let me use sort of the Roman term of piety sort of um piety in the, in the Roman terms means like uh, respect to your family the gods and your city the fact that Hector would contemplate this is a bit silly to me as a classicist because it's a bit stupid because it's like you to stop the fall of your city you would do something which would ultimately not only cause the fall of your city but your entire familiar line in causing this miasma in killing your brother and committing fratricide so that's that's a bit of a thing for me um again Zeus does sort of turn up eventually Hector does actually consider killing Paris which I, again I find a bit silly um and Zeus sort of turns up and sort of gives him a look and Hector doesn't do it but I don't know like obviously it's a, a modern plot point to sort of cause tension they don't really mention the the, the the godly side of it on that front um and I'm not saying no ancient Greek person never killed their brother because they were afraid of pollution it's just in ancient Greek texts when the gods are very ob obvious obviously a presence then it's still sort of a thing again for a modern audience it's not really a factor and I'm not saying the writer should have made it a factor I'm just saying 
from a classical point of view, yeah, it's it's a bit of a silly plot point. Um, so that's miasma, and like I said, there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, causing miasma is actually one of the main reasons. Causing pollution is actually one of the main reasons uh, why the Trojan War gets started in a lot of different texts. Because one way you can cause miasma is by uh, sort of going against a concept called xenia, which means guest friendship. Again, a concept that's not very easily translated into modern um, English culture in that uh, if you go to someone's house and you eat their bread and you drink their wine and they can't hurt you and you can't hurt them and that means you can't kill them, you can't steal from them, you can't do anything. So actually Paris caused a miasma uh, by disrespecting Xenia when he took her when Helen left with him to go to Troy because he was a guest in Menelaus's house. Um, so that caused a problem and then the Greeks if men lay and there's also a concept in ancient Greeks like where like you help your friends and you hurt your enemies and you can cause miasma and pollution by not going after by not hurting an enemy by not sort of trying to get a debt repaid you can also cause miasma in that way so if Menelaus hadn't have tried to get uh, Helen back and to hurt Paris he could have caused then and because in some texts uh, Menelaus's house and Agamemnon's house is so tied together then Agamemnon would be causing miasma by not going after Troy and because they all made an oath they made a promise if they Greeks all broke that that would cause more miasma and it was basically just a they're tied in by oaths and ritual practice which means they have to follow a certain set of cultural ideals to prevent certain things so when uh, you can actually say oh but if you can't kill your family then why does Agamemnon get away with sacrificing Iphigenia his daughter he kills his daughter in the last episode well he doesn't get away with that actually uh, the house of Atreus is flooded with miasma already because their grandfather was a man called Tantalus you might have heard of him he, he killed his son and fed him to the gods so that's breaking the old don't kill your family and guest friendship thing um and they, their entire family line is basically cursed um until Agamemnon's son Orestes sort of again he goes through a in the the uh Aeschylus's Aristia at the end the last play the Irenes he goes through a court case and he's sort of he's purified by the gods at that point so their entire family line is pretty pretty um not very good already um especially because Agamemnon's father and Menelaus's father uh, Atreus he kills his brother's sons uh so there's basically a lot of stuff going on already so killing Iphigenia to stop you know the cultural thing going on with trying to get to Troy it's not really the, it is an issue it is a big issue for them but it's not too you know it compared to their already pretty messed up family line it's it all works out um then you know so that's guest friendship and then the last thing i want to talk about is supplication and supplication well that's the what chris a's gets involved in in um, but it's basically when you go to a person as a supplicant, you know, there's a ritual practice that you so you grab their knee, you hold their, their beard, you grab their beard, you grab their chin, and you ask for their help, or you ask for them to be spare your life, or all that sort of stuff. And you, and they by rights have to grant it to you. Uh, the only way they don't grant it to you is if they're too far off the deep end or something's wrong. And that can cause the gods to punish them, like when Agamemnon doesn't, um, do the supplicate, you know, doesn't follow through with the supplication of Chris Ayers, he doesn't return his daughter, then that causes problems. Um, you know, so there's lots of different things there. Um, and I'm wondering, and supplication is a big part of the Iliad, so I am wondering if they're going to bring supplication into, um, into Troy Fall of the City. And, um, I actually thought they were going to bring supplication into this episode in one scene, and they didn't which is uh, when Paris and Hector leave Troy, they have these two guys with them um, that Aeneas sort of supplies them with and one guy dies and the other one is brought back to the great camp and Agamemnon tries to get some information out of him and then eventually Menelaus just sort of kills him. Um, but I thought the man, so because he's, he's on his knees in front of uh, Agamemnon, I thought, the, I thought the, the man would sort of go, Oh, I you know I supplicate to you I'm you know I you know give me mercy 
and he would do the sort of supplication thing um and then either men layers to sort of sort of cement him as the guy no one likes would go against it and kill him or do something um or that they would spare him and that was sort of in sort of set up supplication as a thing um but they didn't do that uh which fair enough again i'm not sure how much they will bring supplication into it but it is an important part of the iliad um but whether or not the writers of the show decide to actually bring that into the adaptation is a different thing so yeah i'm wondering how much they will bring supplication in there uh, also, one factor I uh, was going back to the Xenia is whether or not the Trojans, when it comes to Helen, because I'll get on to Helen's story now in a minute, uh, that uh, the, the Trojans are watching the Catch-22 because they, because Paris broke guest friendship with Agamemnon and Men with Menelaus, specifically uh, when bringing Helen back to Troy, but uh, guest friendship also goes back, goes both ways, and that Helen is now a guest in Troy, so they cannot go against her will and hurt her by giving her back to the Greeks because that will also break guest friendship that will also break Xenia so there's a lot of stuff with that and I'm going to be curious of how uh, if the writers of the show will bring again will bring pollution or miasma will bring Xenia and then will bring uh, supplication because they are all quite important parts of the Iliad uh, so I'll get so that's that um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, Andromache's storyline, and I found Andromache's storyline very sad, and there will be some spoilers for, uh, potential spoilers for the show going forward. Um, Andromache is trying to get pregnant with her and Hector's child. Um, uh, she's not being successful in being pregnant so far, so she goes to a bunch of midwives, and she's sort of learning more about Hecabe and what on went on with Paris's birth, um, with that, but, uh, there's a lot of dramatic irony I feel for people who are quite familiar with the Trojan myth with what happens with Andromache and Hector's child uh they do get pregnant they do have one son um whose given name is Scamandrius whose name for the the, the, the uh the river outside of Troy but his nickname is a Steinax which means sort of lord, little lord of the city you know he's seen as a uh, Troy's future you know he is the heir of the air he is the future of Troy and after Hector dies and Troy is sacked, um, Andromache is taken as a slave. And again, spoiler, this is spoilers for potentially future plot points. And actually, I'm going to say if you're sensitive about, if you're sensitive to issues of death and specifically the death of a child, I'm not sure the future episodes of this series or future Greek things will be for you, I do have to say, because what happens is, is that the Greek forces just have to decide what to do with this baby. Now he's a very young child, he's a toddler when Troy is sacked, so, um, and again, like I said earlier, an ancient Greek concept is helping your friends and hurting your enemies. So a son is honour bound by the gods to try and avenge his father if his father is killed. So the Greeks worry about what's going to happen if a Steinax is allowed to grow up and potentially try and avenge Hector and Priam and Hall of Troy. So what they decide to do is they decide to throw him off the walls of the city and to kill the child. And they do that. Um, so and a, a big thing with the Iliad is obviously the Iliad um, isn't the first iteration of the Greek, of the Trojan myth. Uh, Obviously, Greek culture had a massive oral culture of oral storytelling beforehand, and uh, the Iliad is just one of our longest surviving, earliest written version of a one instance out of the myth of Troy. So, there's actually, when it's being read, there's a lot of dramatic irony when it comes to the depiction of Hector and Priam and Troy and a Steinax in particular, because, you know, when you're reading the Iliad and he's just this little boy in his mother's arms, you're meant to feel a huge amount of sadness because you know that this little boy will never reach adulthood because even ancient audiences would have known this myth already. They would have known when reading or performing or listening to the Iliad that a Steinex was going to die and I feel like that's what the writers of Troy Fall of a City is trying to do with this in that Andromache so wants to be a mother 
as you can see the actress does a wonderful performance and she really wants to be a mother and she's having it and she hates that she can't fall pregnant but there's part of me watching it being like oh no you don't want to fall pregnant you don't want this child because that child will bring you no end of high because he will die he will be murdered by the greeks so uh, it's really horrible actually uh going into it so there, there's a factor there again from a classics point of view it's quite uh, good to bring up that dramatic irony but I think it's going to be quite hard to watch the show in the future when actually you know like it should be a happy moment when Hector and Andromache have this child together but Hector's doomed and so is the baby so it's just kind of horrible um and Andromache sort of she's she's asked by Hecabe to be nicer to Helen basically Helen um is trying to you know integrate herself more into the city you know with the food shortage she's sort of giving out her grain to the people of Troy and the people of Troy are sort of falling for her they like her um, and Andromache is having such a problem with this because she doesn't like Helen and she thinks that it is Helen's fault that they're on the situation she thinks Helen manipulated Paris into taking her here into taking her to Troy and there's just a feeling there which again it's very accurate to how Andromache feels in texts like Hecabe Trojan Women and Andromache the Tragedy you know in those three plays she really just doesn't like Helen at all she really goes after her um in her speeches uh you know um and it's also in those plays where we see the effect of the death of Sinax on Andromache and it's really sad it's really sad so uh so Andromache and then uh, and one of the issues Andromache has with her in the series is that he um is that Helen left her daughter Hermione and they get sort of speech and then Helen and her Andromache sort of says Helen that tries to be nice to her but goes no ultimately no Helen you're manipulative that Andromache says that Helen has not says directly but sort of implies that Helen has a gift that she can say things that will get anyone to do what Helen wants she's Helen is very manipulative um that her, her acts you know that her acts of good you know her kindness her thing they're all just an act to get what she wants um which sort of it there's an interesting take on it because at least in texts like the Aeneid um you get a certain scene with a character called Diphobus who is the brother of Pri of Hector and Paris and he sort of says a very similar thing in that you know she says that um Helen seduced him and then ultimately betrayed him and then in other texts I think it's the Trojan women uh, where it's discussed of what the Greeks going to do with Helen you know there's the idea that she's going to be put to death and then the sort of a hint that actually Helen manipulates Menelaus into letting her live and sort of goes back home with Menelaus um so there's sort of an element of that and this really comes through in uh what because what the Greeks are doing throughout the episode is that uh uh, Odysseus, oh cunning Odysseus, he has a spy within the city who gets um, Achilles and Patroclus into the city wall so Achilles can kidnap Helen and take her back. And what she does, what he, what Helen does is she shows, I don't really like the scene with, uh, uh, taking away the classics, I think the scene with Achilles and Helen made me very uncomfortable for quite a few reasons but I'm not going to go into that because classics. Um, but basically what's going to happen, what happens is that she uh, manipulates uh, Achilles into sort of leaving her there, you know, she says she won't go willingly, she applies to his honour, she goes to his glory, she says, oh, why are you doing this, for, you know, she, she goes after his pride, like, why are you doing this for a man that you don't respect, you know, you're better than this, and she sort of cajoles him and she tells him a few things, and um, eventually... Uh, Pat Achilles goes back to the Greeks empty handed say oh you know if if Agamemnon or Odysseus wants a corpse then I could have taken her but it wasn't worth it but I've got information and he finds out what ha you know where Paris and Hector was and she finds out about um about uh, Andromache's father and actually with Andromache in the Iliad there's a really big part of the Iliad is with her character in the Iliad is that Hector and Astynax is all she has because by the time the Iliad rolls around, Achilles has actually killed uh, Andromache's father and her brothers. Now, her brothers aren't really mentioned in the episode, but his, her father is. So there's sort of the, the, we know going forward, again, spoilers, that Achilles will kill, potential spoilers, I don't know what the writers are going to do, that Achilles will kill Andromache's father. And there's sort of an element of that. So 
and I think that will tie into her relationship with Helen I think a little bit because how much is Andromache going to lose because of Helen and how much is Helen going to be able to charm her way out of the sort of situations um so there is that so hey there is a question of how much is Helen manipulating the people around her and how much will she manipulate Menelaus when eventually comes back into the city when he comes to the city and they sack Troy because that is a thing um they are they're really going hard with with the Greek camp they're really going hard by how horrible Menelaus is they're really portraying him in a really awful light and again like the last episode I don't know if he's portrayed like this in any Greek texts of that he is the person no one likes and he's horrible and no one likes him and Helen absolutely hated him and they because ultimately you know she's saying oh, I would rather die than go back to Menelaus and at the end of the Trojan War she does go back with Menelaus in the Odyssey when um Telemachus turns up at Sparta asking what happened to his father what happened to Odysseus you have Menelaus and then you have Helen right next to him and I don't think there's much and after Menelaus die like they they sort of just they live and they die separately and they sort of they're fine so they're really pushing this Menelaus is awful and Helen hates him but at the end of the day they do still end up together in the end so okay all right that's the thing um so yeah that's basically my thoughts on the episode and the classics in the episode if you feel like I missed anything out or I didn't explain anything that well when it came to concepts like miasma or xenia or supplication just pop it down below but yeah if you like the episode please like share and subscribe and I will see you next week guys bye